by the way, Ten Hag managed to break down the unbreakable. Bruno. Bruno has never missed a game in his career due to injury. Ten Hag said, hold my beer. I'm going to break the streak. And there you go. He broke a streak. Has so. Ten Hag taken any accountability for these injuries? Or is he is he just putting it all down to bad luck? Because it's pretty clear that it's due to his training methods and it's due to how he set up Man United. Is there any accountability at all? Or is he just like, oh, it's all bad luck. It's out of my hands. Is that a I'm real question? Or, or are you saying that in a sarcastic well, I've, I've not watched Ten Hag's thing. So it's a genuine asking, question. Asking if Ten Hag took accountability is like asking if a chicken can fly. Chicken can. Chickens can fly, can't they? <laughs> no, not to you. Not like like a bird. Like get out of here. What are you talking about? He's a bird. Can <laughs> I'm, I'm googling this now? I don't know. Can chickens, chickens fly? Can fly. Chickens can fly. I think they can fly. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Chickens yes, chickens. Fly. Hang on. Listen, wait. Uh, this comes from USA Today. I don't know how credible that source is. It says yes, chickens can fly, but not for long distances. Um. So unlike other birds, chickens are not bred to fly. That's true. Most domesticated chickens are born, are born for food, not flight. That's the best line I've ever read in my life. <laughs> but they can no, fly. The say is when pigs fly, but <laughs> somehow maybe chickens fly. So, so in this analogy, is Ten Hag a flightless bird or what? Ten Hag taking going? accountability is like asking if a fish can swim. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. But no, he hasn't taken it. Listen, what I love sure. about it is not every injury is going to be his fault, okay? Some of it will be the medical team. Some of it will be bad luck. But of course, you have to look at how many injuries that we've had, the muscle injuries, the consistent breakdowns, rushing people back. What I love about the people that support Ten Hag through Thick and Thin is that just ignore all of that stuff. And that, for me, is where you've got to have balance. So do I blame every injury upon him? Absolutely not. But there has to be some accountability. There, there has to be. Our injury record this season is, is beyond a joke. No fit proper first-team centre-backs at the football club, as an example. I think we've had, on average, 15 to 16 people out for every game this year. And that's also contributed to us being poor. I've never, I've never denied that. If we had a strongest available 11 for most games, would we be in a better position? Most likely. However... The manager's been building this squad for two years, renewing certain contracts, and then it's his medical team and his training methods. You put that all together, it's a shit show. And I'm, I'm sorry to say that. Oh, you like praising rivals, Terry, but you can't say nothing nice about your own club. What are nice things are there to say about Man United right now? I think I'm being nice by being honest. If I'm if I'm being if I'm being fair, but yeah, I, I'm worried about tonight. Well, how do you see it going tonight, Henry, for United away at Crystal Palace? Tough place to go. They've won. I think they've won two. They've got last two home games. I think it was West Ham and Newcastle, and they won. Well, they batted West Ham, but that's not exactly difficult at the moment. But they look they're undefeated. A lot in four. undefeated. Sorry? They're undefeated in their last four. Yeah, they, 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 he's got a Glasner's very underrated coach. I think he won the Europa at Frankfurt. Um, that whole that whole campaign, Frankfurt are playing good stuff. He's come to a Palace team. You know, you know the weapons they've got. You know they've got Eze, Mateta, Elise. And your defence, I'll be astonished if you keep a clean sheet. I mean, is it Maguire's now out for three weeks as well? I, I don't think you're going to win. You, the problem is you have to win tonight if you want to, because Chelsea are breathing down your necks. We've just dropped points as well. I mean, us dropping points at the moment is pretty much guaranteed the way we're playing. You have got to win tonight because you've got Arsenal on Sunday, another very, very tough game. And if you want to make sure that you're in Europa League position going into next season, you've got to win. But I just, I don't see a world in which, in which you do. If Bruno Fernandes is out and he was playing in that 10 role, we know how good he's been the last few games. If Rashford's out, if your back four is kind of like all over the place, if you win, it's going to be a scrappy, scrappy 1-0. It's going to be a goal from a set piece. It's going to be, Palace are going to dominate the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if Palace have 58, 60% possession tonight. I would not be surprised. And the, and for, for you boys, it's all about getting into Europe, getting into this into next season, and bringing a new manager in. Like if Ten Hag is going to go to Bayern, whoever you get, you need to appoint soon so they get a pre-season so he can get his new players in. But to answer your question, I, I don't see a world in which Man United win tonight. And that's not me being anti-Man United. It's just the, the the level of injuries you've got and the form you're in. I mean, how you didn't beat Burnley? I mean, Burnley are terrible. Don't like, say are, too much. Yeah, I'm not expecting us to beat Burnley either, by the way. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. 
Burnley are fighting for their life. The thing is, Manchester United, the only thing you have to play for now is the, is the FA Cup. I know league positions and pride for your last couple games, your last home game and everything, but it just seems like every, every, everything is building up for that FA Cup game. I, I think if, if these guys had a meaningful game today, would Harry Maguire miss this game due to injury or would he, would he thug it out and still play? If Bruno Fernandes, if this game was a meaningful game, would he have still thugged it out and played or would he have missed the game due to injury? I think, you know what, if you guys, ha if you guys had something serious to play for, some of these players still would, might have been on the pitch. At this point, it just seems like a precaution for the FA Cup, knowing that you that's your biggest game remaining for the season. And you don't want any more further injuries leading up to that game. So it could be it could be just to protect these players leading up to the FA Cup final. I do get that to a certain degree. The, the, the issue I have, if that's the, 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 the way we're going, if you look at Chelsea right now, they're playing themselves into really good form. And if Chelsea were to play Man City this weekend or the weekend after in an FA Cup semi-final, I might beat them now because that confidence is starting to grow. If Man United have any chance of beating City in that final, we have to try and play ourselves into a bit of a form before it. We are so bad right now. It, it's almost identical to the end of last season. There was very few United fans who had any faith or believed there was any real hope that we would deliver in the FA Cup final based on just how poor we are. We can't keep clean sheets. We can barely score. We can't control the ball. You know, it's hard to control a game against City, even if you're one of the best teams in the world. But there's almost, we can't even defend resolutely. So I don't even have faith that we could sit behind the ball for 90 minutes and stink out a 1-0. Because by the way, if we did that in 1-1-0, one, I'm going to celebrate because it's still a trophy. And that's what matters in the cold, hard light of day, especially in cup competitions. But yeah, I'm, I'm just, part of me is looking forward to the FA Cup final because I love the FA Cup. But I am just counting down the days until the season ends and we get a re we will get a reset in the summer. And we know that we're moving in, in multiple new directions in, in certain departments, but hopefully pulling all together and, and, and moving on as one. And I just can't wait. Honestly, um, I had a really good weekend this weekend in terms of family time, time with friends, enjoyed the football that was on. And at this moment, I got in the car this morning and I realized why it was such a good weekend because I hadn't watched my team play. Not watching Man United makes me feel we are that bad at football right now. And I got called out by United fans a few weeks ago, but the way I was called out tells me I'm right. We are the worst footballing team in England. I don't think there's a team, pound for pound, I said. I don't think there's another team in England that plays as badly as we do, pound for pound. I genuinely believe that. I've watched a number of League One and League Two games this year. Now, of course, we would beat those teams, generally speaking. If we played them 100 times, we'd win 99 of them easily. Hmm. They play better at school than we do. It's not a bad claim. I mean, when you look at a team like Ipswich, the uh, back-to-back promotions with with McKenna, big up McKenna, obviously every time, you know, and 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 rightfully so, earned their spot into the Premier League next season. But when you see a team with League One players win the championship, because yes, they, no one really ever does a double promotion like that. Like back-to-back -back promotions is unheard of. And that's a team that doesn't really have money and a lot of quality, but they have a proper coach that came in and made that team play good football and got League One players to win the championship. And he's about to have League One players in the Premier League, you know? So it's not a bad claim when you say that pound for pound, we are one of the worst teams out there. We are probably the worst coach team in England and somewhere in Europe. We're, we're up there in the ranks because we're such a bad coach team. Like, it, it, there's no denial. And today I'm hearing people saying, the, the Ten Hag is defending him, saying, how are you expecting him to win when he doesn't have a backline? Well, I'm sorry, how long has this backline issue happened for? What, the past three, four weeks? Let's say a month. I'm going to give you a whole month. What happened before that month? Why are people acting like all of a sudden we became bad because we lost our backline? We've been a bad team. We've been yeah. a bad team for about a good part of two years. You know, So why are we acting like this is new? If people were saying, okay, people were saying we got to lay off Ten Hag because like, how is he expected to win at Palace today with a team like that? I will be honest with you. If we lose today, the first thing, it's not going to be the first thing I say. I'm not going to scream after, you know, like, oh my God, Ten Hag got because we lost the Palace. I don't need to say that because like, I, it's been known from before it. If I could ever give him an excuse, it's probably today. I'll be like, yeah, I understand we didn't win because we don't have a backline. But I'm under no delusion that if we had a backline today, we would have played good football. Because I haven't seen us play good football for large parts, as I said, of two years. When we've had our, our squad fit sometimes at 100%, 90%, 70%, or 50%. So I, I feel like the, the Tenag inners now are unfortunately going to use this as an excuse to say, see, just give them some time and back him a little bit more. 
I, 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 I can't see that. I can't see that at all. Are you, you know? Do you think he lost the dressing room and it's done? Like he's gone anyways. I don't know. I don't know about. I think for dress- once that the players seem mm. to actually re- they want to like Ten Hag. I think for the most part, this is like one of the in terms of like post Fergie, one of like the times where that you can tell the players on the pitch are actually trying really hard to implement what Ten Hag wants them to implement. His methods are just fundamentally flawed. I, I don't think it's the players t- yeah. turning their back on him. I just don't think that logistically what he's coaching, as Staffy said, which which I agree with in terms of like maybe being the worst coach team in the league, um, it, it's they're sort of like failing by definition because he's asking them to do an impossible job. And, and and I think the players are actually genuinely, for once, you know, trying really hard. It's not like where they're down tours against Mourinho or, yeah, or uh, I, Van Hal or whatever. No, 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 no I, I, excuse I, me. I don't I, want to interrupt. But but can can I ask the super chatter here? What lies that? First of all, you're you're so quick to send a super chat every time I say something. It's actually a, it's, it's it's scary. Can you tell me what I said that was a lie so far? Because there's five people on the panel that could have stopped me and told me stop lying. Can you tell me what I lied about? I just want to know what I lied about for my own curiosity. Maybe I just have no awareness of what I'm saying. So please educate me. Yeah, I, I don't think you lied. You gave an opinion. Um, not everyone's going to agree with every element of it, but I don't think you told any lies. What was really, I agree with Nobbins, by the way. I don't think people have down tools per se. Some will look at, oh, I don't see Rashford run enough. I see Rashford run enough plenty. There's times where he don't, there's times where he does. People moan about the midfield and I'd look at it and think, well, there's holes in it for a reason. They can't sprint every minute of every game with the way we have holes everywhere. But interestingly...